Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here at Bex. Today, I want to talk about pollination and kernel establishment. I want to talk about the hardware involved with that. I want to map out the process itself, and I want to give some perspective on whether the window to get kernel establishment right is broad or is it really narrow. Let's start with the hardware and let's go up top and let's talk about the tassel. The tassel is, of course, the male flower portion of the plant, and it's covered with lots of little shell-like objects called glooms. And inside those glooms are anthers. They can protrude out, and inside of each one of those anthers are tons and tons of pollen. How much pollen is shed by the average tassel? A couple to few million pollen grains are produced, and that adds up to a couple to few thousand pollen grains for each one of the silks on this ear. In other words, the plant gives itself plenty of opportunity to get ovules fertilized and establish kernels. It also increases the odds of doing that by only shedding pollen at opportune periods of time. Those little pollen grains are actually kind of easily desiccated. And so the plant doesn't want to shed those when we reach the bulk of that heat during the day. And it really doesn't want to shed those earlier when the plants are still wet and you could have pollen grains sequestered on leaf material. And so because of that, the plant tends to shed most of its pollen between 9 and 11 o'clock. And it tends to shed over a period of several days with that day three period kind of being the real prime period for the bulk of pollen being released. The pollen released may cover large distances, but the majority of that pollen actually falls within a couple dozen feet of the plant itself. And some of that pollen manages to find its way to the silk of the plant, and that's what we should talk about next. If we talk about the silk, the best way for us to do that is to actually strip back the ear and see what those silks are connected to. Up and down that ear, you will see small little bumps, little potential kernels. They're not kernels yet, called ovules, and those ovules have a silk attached to them. The silks on this plant are going to start out emerging from the base of the ear and they will work their way up to the top. The pace of silk emergence will be very dependent upon how much moisture we have. If it is dry, if this plant is under moisture stress, those silks will creep out of the ear, increasing the chances that we miss pollen shed. If we have plenty of moisture, those silks fly out of the ear, sometimes on the order of a couple to a few inches per evening if we see the adequate amount of moisture that we need for that silk. Those silks will emerge and as pollen grains fall, they will land on the silk. They will get caught by little barbs on the silk. They will also be caught by the stickiness of the silk itself and the pollen grain will germinate. It will send down a pollen tube that will grow down to those little ovules within a dozen to 24 hours. And at that point, when it reaches the little ovule, it will burst open, release its genetic material into that kernel, form that kernel, and at that point, the silk pinches off and becomes brown silk that you and I are actually familiar with. Now, do I have a broad or narrow period of time to get this right? Even though we think of this being a broad period of time, we have a narrow period of time to get pollination right. If we miss this, it only happens over a few to several days, we can mess up the whole season and mess up yield. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon.